Hey everyone, in this video I want to show you 5 word blender tips and tricks that I personally use that save me a lot of time and that's also going to help you to be more efficient and save some time as well. So let's jump right in. So the first tip and trick I want to show you that I started recently using is the using different scenes inside one blender file. So if you watched my previous animations or if you also worked on some Minecraft animations, then you might know that you might need different locations, different maps and different scenes. So you can create different blender files for that. But if you want to save time and be more organized, then you can create different scenes inside one Blender file. So the way you can do that is to go in the top right corner. And if I click this, as you can see, I have four scenes. So right here, I have a completely different scene. And if I click on scene two, it's just going to jump me in a new location, which I created and customized. And again, if I go to scene three and scene four, they're also going to be different. So this helps you save a lot of time. This helps you also copy and paste objects pretty easily inside your scene. The only downside to this that I found is uh, your scene is pretty big if you do that and it's going to be lanky. But for me, it's worth it. And if you have a decent PC and if your animation is not too big and your computer can handle it, then I really recommend using different scenes. So the way you can create new scenes is click on this icon over here. And then we can either create a new empty scene, copy settings, create a linked copy or create a full copy. So what I like to do is just create a full copy, which is going to create a new scene and then copy everything from here. Now I can rename the scene. For example, in this case, I'm going to name the scene underscore five because it's going to be a fifth scene. And now I can just delete and customize everything that I want and just import any world, import new characters and do whatever I want. Or if you want to create completely new scene, you can just click here and click on new. And it's just going to create a completely empty scene. And then you can rename this and then just jump back to your scenes and then continue working this way. And now another tip and trick I want to show you is deleting the unused data from your Blender file to clean up more space. So if I select all of the objects, so as you can see, I just created seed five, which I don't really need. Now, let's say I want to delete all of these objects. So I can just press on A, select everything, delete everything. Then go to the outliner, press on A, select all of the collections that I don't need and just delete everything. And even though I deleted everything, it's still going to leave behind a lot of unused data. So the way I can get rid of that is to go to file, then click on clean up, click on unused data blocks. And as you can see, it's telling me it's going to clean up 528 unused data blocks. So there are basically a lot of unused materials, actions, armatures. It just tells you everything here. You can click here, delete everything. Also, it's going to help you manage your blender file size and the file size is also going to reduce, which is also a good thing. So the next tip I want to show you is with the timeline. So I'm going to turn on the screencast keys for that. And let's say I want my animations to start at frame 50. Now I can go here and then change the start frame to 50. Or I could just copy this and then paste this here. So for example, now I want to be on 100 frame. I could just hover over this, click on Control C and then Control V. But an easier way to do that is let's say now I want my starting frame to be 150. I can just go on my keyboard and then click on Control Home. And it's just going to set the starting keyframe with one click. And if I go to frame 500, let's say I want my end frame to be 500. Instead of just uh, writing it manually here, I can just hover over the timeline and click on Control End. And it's just going to set the end frame and the start frame with that. So if you hover over the timeline, Control Home and then Control End shortcuts help you to set the start and end frames pretty quickly. I use that pretty frequently. If I need to change anything in my scene, for example, here, just click on Control Home. Go over here, click on Control End. And it's way quicker than just typing it manually over here. Now, another tip I want to show you is if you're an old Blender user, so if you started using Blender 2.7 or 2.6 and older, and you're pretty intimidated with new Blender versions, and you want to use all of the old shortcuts, then you can go to Edit, Preferences, click on Key Map, and then if you go on top, you have Blender, Blender 2.7, and Industry Compatible. If you click on Blender 2.7, it's going to set all of the shortcuts that were in the old Blender versions, or if you're coming from Autodesk Maya or other industry standard softwares, then you can click on industry compatible and choose the industry compatible options, which are going to be similar to industry standard and all the other softwares. Now, I've never used it. I'm not sure about that, but I've heard a lot of people teaching to change this to industry compatible and it's just going to set your key map and all the shortcuts to the industry compatible softwares. I've had a few questions about Maya users, how I can set the shortcuts in Blender for the Maya user. And that's the way you do it. Just go to edit preferences, key map, and the changes from Blender to industry compatible. And now the last tip I want to show you is has to do with the BPS character rig or any other character rig that you can use. And by the way, the BPS character rig it belongs to Squared Media and I will leave all the necessary links in the description like their channel and their Discord server as well. So if I select my character rig, I have it organized here inside the characters folder and I have the Steve here, 
which has this BPS character recollection. Now, let's say I want to extrude the face. I'm doing that because I have a lot of questions about extruding BPS rig, and it's actually not complicated to do. So if you download this rig, uh, you can see that you're, you're not able to select the mesh, you're only able to select the bones of the character. So I'm quickly going to get rid of the map because we're not going to need it. And I'm also going to get rid of the lights because we're not going to need them as well. And on some other rigs, on default, you might be able to select the mesh. But if you're not able to select the mesh, it's pretty easy to fix. Just select your character, go to the outliner, then select this armature, expand this, then expand the outliner as well. And if you scroll down, you can see we have this tab, which is called meshes, BPS version 4 meshes. If I expand that, first of all, what you can do is click on this filter icon and you might not have this selection icon enabled. So this is selectable icon. So if you don't have it enabled, just click on this filter, enable the selectable option. Now expand the meshes, like we said. So I think Steve is not going to be the best example. So I'm just going to use my own skin. And my own skin has the second layer of the head applied. As you can see, I have the layer, the second layer on my skin. Steve doesn't have that. So again, if I go inside the meshes, I can find the head or I can also find the mesh layer head. So once I expand the meshes over here in the outliner, I can find the mesh layer head. For this rig, it's going to be the mesh layer head. So this is the mesh head, which we don't need. We need mesh layer head. So if I just click on this and make this selectable, and if I click here, uh, it's going to be selectable and I can just select it and customize it however I want. So if I click on tab and go inside the edit mode, as you can see, uh, first of all, make sure you're in the face selection mode. So if I go inside the face selection mode, I can select different parts of the head. So for example, I want to extrude some parts over here. I can just left, uh, left click, select them and shift select all of the faces that I want to extrude. Then I can click on E and then extrude them up. But the problem with that is some UVs are going to be messed up. So if you want to see it better, I'm going to do it on the side. So let's say I want to extrude some of these over here. Some of this here, I can just click on E to extrude it up. But if I move around, as you can see, the faces are flickering and they're a bit messed up. So the way we can fix that is make sure all of your faces are selected. If not, you can just shift select them again. Then what you can do is select all of the faces in the front. Or an easier way you can do that is just click on Control Numpad Plus. And it's just going to keep selecting all of the faces which are next to it. If I click on Control Numpad Plus, it's going to keep doing this. And it's an easier way to select different types of faces. Or if not, you can do it manually if you don't have a numpad. But uh, I like to select all of these faces. Click on Numpad, Control Numpad Plus. Now what I can do is go inside the UV Editor. I like to open the UV Editor on my left screen. So I can click here, go inside the UV Editor. And then what I can do is press on A to select all of the UVs over here. So the way we can fix this problem is first of all, I'm going to disable the overlay so you can see what's going on here. So once I'm inside the UV editor and I selected all of my faces right here, all of my UVs by pressing A, what I can do is just press on S and then slightly scale it down. And now there you go. The problem is going to fix. There's not going to be the weird flickering going on. So again, it's, uh, the way you can do that is press on A, select everything inside the UV editor, press on S and scale it down. If you want to be more precise, you can just press on S and then the last arrow and it's just going to slightly scale it down and then your problem is going to be fixed. So yeah, that's the way you can extrude the BPS rig. And yeah, that's the way you can do that. That's the way I extruded some piglin ears if you watch my time-lapse animation video and it's pretty easy to do. So yeah, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked the video, I would really appreciate if you give it a like. Also, if you want to see how I make my own animations and the process that I follow and the workflow that I use to create some animations, especially Minecraft animations pretty quickly, then you can check out this video over here and I will see you there. Thank you for watching.